Hello and welcome. Today we're going to be talking about inner, the inner product and a few example problems. Okay, so let's recall what the inner product is. It is a, it's a dot product, a type uh, um, operation on two, two vectors in a vector space. Uh, the one we're specifically interested in is one about functions. So uh, a, a vector space of functions, so we talk about it like this. We use the angle bracket notation like that. And typically they're set up so you're integrating over some domain, call it D, of f of x times g of x dx. Okay, so D is just some given domain. And what we know about this is that it's bilinear, uh, bilinear, which means um, uh, it uh, passes through sums and scalar multiplications. Uh, in both positions. Okay, so for instance, what I mean by both positions is that if I put a sum or a scalar multiplication or both in either the first position or the second position, uh, it will pass through those both, both way. And the other thing, of course, is it's symmetric. So that f comma g is the same thing as g comma f. Of course, this is clear if you look at the integral. If you know the property of integration, you know that it'll have all these properties. And so you have things like this. I could have like 2f plus 3h comma uh, negative um, 4g. And I could then turn this into 2f comma negative 4g plus 3h comma negative 4g, and we could take that even further. So this is just a little example here of uh, 2 times 3 f comma h, uh, and then also uh, um, oh sorry, I'm, I, I, uh, I, I screwed up my arithmetic there. Let me go back here. What we have here is we have um, we have a two times negative four uh, times f comma g, and then also here a three times negative four times h comma g. Okay, so you can go further and then compute these. Okay, we also have the property of orthogonality. That f comma g is equal to zero. It implies then that f and g are orthogonal uh, to each other. All right, so orthogonality is a property that comes between the pair, any two pairs of functions. Either they are orthogonal or not. Um, let's just do a few example um, problems that could show up on an exam or something like that. Okay, I'm going to talk about uh, computing an orthogonal projection. Suppose um, we're given f of x, and, and maybe we'll give it a specific example, and we're going to call it x and then g of course g of x is going to be equal to <coughs> x squared okay and we're on this domain it's just the function 0 to 1 right and so what we want to talk about now is okay uh, what is the best the best approximation
of g of x achievable by ax, where a is some sort of constant, a scalar multiplication. All right, so what we're going to do is say, we're going to say that g hat of x is going to be the what we call our best estimate. I shouldn't call it an estimate. Maybe actually we'll call it a best approximation. This is going to be ax. So that ax in magnitude minus x squared is minimum. Okay, so here, of course, we have what we call the norm or the magnitude. And the magnitude is given by this. If I have any function, h, the squared magnitude will be for some interval Actually, we'll just call it D, like that. And it is equal to H comma H, the inner product right there. All right, so that is our definition of magnitude. So what we want to do, of course, is see if we can find... So our goal is to find the best, the best A value. Minus X squared. So that's going to be, and we're going on the interval 0 to 1. And it'll be a x plus oops minus x squared quantity squared dx. Now I could just calculate that out, but I actually know an important theorem. An important uh, fact, which is the orthogonal projection. We know, and we've shown this in previous videos, that A is going to be F comma G over F comma F. We know that has to be true. So let's compute this. Let's figure out what this value is. Uh, so this must be the best. Okay. So let's just compute it straight away. We take a, and it's going to be equal to the integral from 0 to 1 of x times x squared, all over integral of 0 to 1 of x squared dx. dx like that. Uh, so that's going to be x to the fourth over 4, 0 to 1, all over x to the third over 3, 0 to 1. And that's going to be 1 fourth over 1 third, otherwise known as 3 fourths. So my g hat function is going to be 3 fourths x. And that is the closest we can get to x squared on the interval 0 to 1. All right, let's just draw a picture to get an idea of what's going on. So we know x squared is the parabola that goes like that. There's my parabola. It's the best I can do with my parabola. And, and, at, and it's equal to 1 at x equals 1. Okay. Likewise, if I have the function uh, 3 fourths x, we know it's going to go to about, it'll go to 3 fourths, so it has a slope of 3 fourths, so it's going to kind of go like this. Right about there. Right, so the idea here is that the, the squared error between these functions is the smallest as you can get, that, get it. And, uh, and that's the idea behind this calculation. So that's just one example of how to use inner products to do uh, work to compute things. Okay, let's now go and do another example, okay? Uh, okay, so here's another example of using inner products to make to do particular things. So, um, what I want to do is suppose 
suppose that uh, f comma g is equal to one and f comma f is equal to two, uh, g comma g is equal to three, and then h comma f is equal to um, negative two, and that h comma h is equal to one, and that uh, h comma g is equal to three, negative three. Okay, so if I have these values, they're already pre-computed. Your goal is to compute uh, 2 f plus g 3 h plus um, f 2 f okay so we just want so what we're going to use of course is that bilinearity so if I want to compute this what I do is I pass through the sum. So I'm going to break it up by this sum first. We'll break up the second, the first sum in a second by just going 2f plus g comma 3h plus 2f plus g comma 2f. Okay, and now we break it down even further. We have 2f 3h plus g 3h plus 2f 2f plus uh, g comma 2f. All right, now we can go even further and pull out all the scalar multiplications. So there, now we're going to have here 6 times f comma h, or h right there, uh, plus 3g comma h, plus 4 f comma f plus 2 of g comma f. All right, now all we have to do is substitute in all of our, uh, uh, our pre-computed numbers. We have 6 times negative 2 plus 3 times uh, negative 3 uh, plus 4 times 2 plus 2 times, uh, let's see, where is it? 1. Okay, so we have negative 12, negative 9, positive 8, and positive 2. So we have here um, negative 21 plus 10, that's equal to negative 11. So we're done with that sort of problem. All right. In this final example, I'm going to do one more example. And now we're going to do one involving uh, orthogonal functions. Okay, so consider the set phi n of x. n starts at 1, and let's say it goes up to... Um, capital N, where N is, is big, okay? And we know that any two uh, functions from this set are orthogonal, okay? Otherwise, we know that phi N comma phi n, that's going to be equal to, let's say, 2n, okay? Now, also, consider a function f of x, okay? We know that uh, phi n comma f is equal to 1 over n squared. Okay. So what we're going to do now 
is I want to compute. I want. I have two questions here. First, compute uh, the uh, orthogonal projection. So we'll call it f hat, which is equal to the sum c n phi n of x, like that. Okay, and of course that's the best approximation. I.e., the magnitude of f minus f hat is minimum. Okay, and b compute. phi 4 comma f hat. We want to compute that inner product. Okay. Let's see if we can do this. All right. Now let's start on the answer. Let's start with problem A. Uh, let's compute that orthogonal projection. We know that the cn numbers, they have to be equal to phi n comma f all over phi n comma phi n. All right, so that's going to be 1 over n squared all over 2n. So that's going to be 1 over 2n cubed. Nice. All right, so, so f hat is going to be equal to the sum. n starts at 1, goes up to to capital N. I'm not going up to infinity on this particular problem. Sorry about that. 2n to the third power times phi of x. So that's our answer there. Now let's compute part B. Now if I have this, I have phi 4 and I have this sum here, 1 over 2n to the third power phi of x then like that so i should note that with this one we're going to assume that capital n is bigger than four uh, we should have that be true okay so with this problem we're going to use again use line bilinearity so what that means is it passes through sums so we have the sum then, the summation notation, the sigma symbol, will pass outside. And also, scalar multiplications, which are those coefficients there. And we're left with this. Like that. And now, use orthogonality. We know that phi 4 comma phi n is equal to 0 when n is not equal to 4. And it's equal to 2n, so it's going to be 2 times 4, otherwise known as 8, when n is equal to 4. Therefore, what comes out of all of this is going to be Just the n equals 4 term, so it's going to be 1 over 2 times 4 to the, three, the third power times 8. Um, we can simplify that a little bit. And just note that um, this is going to be 4 over 4 to the third, otherwise known as 1 16th. Okay, so that's that problem. The arithmetic here is not that complicated. It really, the logical junctures of the problem all involve properties of the inner product, okay? Properties of the inner product and concepts about the inner product and understanding orthogonal projection. It's really, I want to make these problems as simple as possible so you're not doing any heavy calculations, but it shows me that you know how to use the properties of the inner product you understand orthogonality, you understand orthogonal projection in order to make calculations like this possible. All right, thank you very much.